Why is it so hot today? Right? <gasps> Ew, is that a paranko? I think so. Maybe it's because of the new deodorant that I tried on the other day. I think it made my skin irritated. That's why you need to check the ingredients before trying a new deodorant. Right? I guess you're right. Indonesia, a beautiful archipelago located along the equator, is a tropical country known for its warm climate. However, unlike many other tropical regions, Indonesia experiences higher than average temperatures. The country's average temperature can reach up to 35 degrees Celsius, combined with humidity levels as high as 85%. High humidity affects our body's ability to cool down. It does not necessarily increase sweat production, but rather it slows down sweat evaporation. This can cause discomfort, making it harder for the body to regulate its temperature. When sweat cannot evaporate properly, it leads to prolonged skin dampness, increasing the risk of bacterial infections. According to research, excessive sweating can contribute to common skin infections, such as boils or furuncles. Boils are often caused by bacterial colonization, especially in hot and humid climates. Studies indicate that skin infections in Indonesia account for 4.6% to 12.95% of common diseases, ranking third among the 10 most prevalent illnesses. Besides skin infections, body odor is another hygiene-related issue that many people experience. Sweat itself is odorless, but when it interacts with bacteria on the skin, it produces an unpleasant smell. Certain bacterial groups such as Coronibacterium, Propionibacteria, and Staphylococcus epidermidis are responsible for body odor. To combat this, many people use deodorants to control bacteria and minimize unpleasant smells. However, long-term use of chemical-based deodorants, especially aerosol types, has raised health concerns. Studies have linked prolonged deodorant use to skin conditions like dermatitis. This calls for a safer, natural alternative. Indonesia, with its vast ocean resources, is home to spirulina, a type of algae known as a superfood. While it is commonly used as a dietary supplement, recent studies reveal that spirulina's pigment fractions can inhibit pathogenic bacteria, including antibiotic resistance strains. This makes it a promising antimicrobial agent. Another underutilized natural resource in Indonesia is the bale fruit. Research shows that its ethanol extract contains powerful antibacterial compounds such as alkaloids, flavonoids, glycosides, saponins, and tannins. One of these compounds, tannin, has demonstrated strong antibacterial effects against Staphylococcus aureus, a major cause of skin infections. With the increasing need for safer hygiene products, a natural deodorant formulated with spirulina and bale fruit extract could be a revolutionary solution. Further research on phycocyanin from spirulina and tannins from bale fruit could open doors to new antimicrobial applications. By harnessing these natural resources, we can promote both personal health and environmental sustainability. Together, let's harness Indonesia's natural urges for a healthier you. In this research we aim to Know the effect of phycocyanin concentration on the inhibition of Staphylococcus epidermidis. Know the effect of tannin concentration on the inhibition of Staphylococcus aureus. And to assess the bacterial inhibition, stability, and convenience of a spirulina and bale fruit extract-based deodorant. So, come join us and witness the process of making innovation like no other. Our first step into making this deodorant is by extracting the phycocyanin from the spirulina. First, spirulina is dried using a tissue paper and put in a dehydrator over a heat of 50 degrees Celsius. The dried spirulina is then blended and sifted until a powder is obtained. Next, to extract the phycocyanin from the powder, 18.75 grams of spirulina powder is soaked in 84.87 milliliters of distilled water over a period of 12 hours. Then, the mixture is frozen for 24 hours. After it is frozen, the mixture is thawed for 15 minutes and added with more distilled water. The mixture is then centrifuged at a speed of 3,000 rotations per minute for 30 minutes. The centrifuge extract is then filtered using filter paper, which will result in fresh phycocyanin extract. Yes. The next step is to create an ethanol extract from bale fruit. First, a fresh bale fruit is washed and then cut so that the flesh of the fruit can be obtained. The flesh is then cut into small pieces and then put into a dehydrator over a heat of 50 degrees Celsius. The dried bale fruit is then blended and sifted so that a powder is obtained. 100 grams of the bale fruit powder is then soaked with 1 liter of 70% ethanol. And then, the mixture is macerated in a dark area and mixed once every 24 hours over a period of 3 days. After that, the mixture is then filtered so that the solid residue is separated from the filtrate. The filtrate is then macerated again with 70% ethanol for 2 days. The two filtrates are then mixed together and put in a water bath with a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius until a thick extract of bale fruit is obtained. Next is the deodorant making process. First of all, in a steel bowl, mix 8 grams of arrowroot powder with 144 milliliters of distilled water. Put the steel bowl above a pan filled with water on low heat and stir until the mixture becomes thick. 
turn the heat off and add 4 ml of vitamin E oil, 1.6 ml of essential oil, and 40 ml of coconut oil, and mix well. Next, separate the mixture into 4 bowls, each given a different ratio of fucosianin and bilfruit extract. F0 having a ratio of 0 to 0, F1 having a ratio of 1 to 2, F2 having a ratio of 1 to 1, and F3 having a ratio of 2 to 1. Pour the mixture into each deodorant tube and label them. To see how well our deodorants worked, we ran a few tests, one of them being the antibacterial test. 0.1 microliters of each bacteria were inoculated into the solid median agar of each petri dish and spread using a cotton bud. Blank discs that are soaked with each samples and control variables are then put on top of the bacterial suspension. This is repeated three times for accuracy. The petri dishes are then incubated over a heat of 37 degrees Celsius and the diameters are measured for 3 hours for 24 hours using a vernier caliper to measure the horizontal, diagonal, and vertical diameters. The diameter is then subtracted by 6, which is the diameter of the blank disk, and it is then divided by 3 to find the average of the inhibition zone. So, let's go over the results. As shown in the table, we found that Formula 1 gave us the largest inhibition zones for both bacteria, even when compared to the commercial deodorant. However, in our hedonic test, we found out that most of the panelists enjoyed the third formula better because of its aroma, color, and texture. Here are some other tests we did. So to conclude our research, what did we learn? A deodorant formula with more tannin extract than phycocyanin showed better antibacterial effects, indicating tannin stronger inhibition of SRIS and epidermidis. Higher tannin extract levels made the sample more acidic. Volunteers preferred the third formula, which had more phycocyanin than tannin, for its aroma, color, and texture. And what do you recommend for future research? Number one is to ensure and maintain the extract quality. And number two, measure concentration for accurate results. That's, That's all from us. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more insights. insights.